in this video I will show you the chord sequence I use for playing back up to Texas fiddle tunes specifically Tom and Jerry in A major using chords in the open position you will find it helpful if you download the notation and explanatory notes from the workshops section at irishguitarpod.com slash workshops. It's in the Texas Fiddle Backup Open Chords folder. There's also a sheet containing the melody in both standard notation and tablature. There's no registration or login required to access this. The backup for the tune is a repetitive eight bar chord progression and as it's in the key of A major you will need to capo on the second fret. Parts 1, 3, 5 and 6 use what I'll call the Texas fiddle style backup chords and parts 2 and 4 use a more conventional chord progression. Each bar begins with a bass note followed by a chord followed by a bass note followed by another chord and as each chord or note is played on the beat you will only require downstrokes. So for parts 1, 3, 5 and 6 the first bar you play is an open G chord but start with the G bass note and then strum the G chord. The next chord of bar 1 is a G slash B. This means exactly what it says. It's a G chord with a B bass which you will find on the fifth string and it's already there. It's part of the chord so there's no need to move your fretting hand. So you play the B and then strum the chord. For bar two you follow the same procedure. Uh, when you get to the C sharp diminished chord you just play the C sharp note one fret higher than the C note. So have a C chord and then C sharp diminished. You can leave the rest of the chord as is. Bar three starts with a G chord but pick the D note on the open fourth string and then strum the chord. You go to the E7 and play the E note on the 4th string, on the 2nd fret. And then for bar 4 you play an A or an A7 chord with an A bass note on the open 5th string and strum. And then a D chord or a D7 chord with a D note and strum. So that's the first four bars and it should sound something like this. The fifth and sixth bars are identical to what you played in bars one and two. The seventh and the first half of the eighth bar is a D chord or a D7 which uses the D, A and F sharp bass notes. And you finish on the G chord with a low G bass note and strum or you could hold the G note for half a bar. My version of the tune 
has six parts, each of eight bars and repeated. And when I've played through the six parts, I go back to the first part, play it through twice, a second time with a sort of an ending phrase. These chords are a simplified way of playing a more intricate closed chord version. And once you have mastered this simplified method, you might want to tackle the more difficult methods using what might broadly be termed jazz chords. This open position will suit tunes in G major, no capo required, A major, capo on the second fret, or B flat, capo on the third fret. Depending on both the quality and accuracy of your guitar, you could capo as high as the seventh fret, which will give you the key of D, but after that, gets a bit cramped. Uh, make sure to use a quality capo. I use a Kaiser, a, a Kaiser Quick Change or a G7 Nashville Spring capo, which is the one that I'm currently using. Both of these capos compress the strings across the fretboard evenly. I can capo up to the 10th fret of my uh, Martin HD28 and play a C chord and uh, it's, it's still perfectly in tune. A quality capo is a, is a most important part of your gear. So spend wisely. Now, what I'm going to do, or the other piece of advice is when you put your capo on, uh, make sure that it's hard up against the fret. You don't want it like that. Otherwise, you can get buzzing problems or, or it can be pressing the strings down at, at different uh, with different amounts of pressure. So always place it right, right next to that. Uh, the fret that you're fretting to. I'll now play the whole tune through uh, at a moderate tempo. Thank you. 